first, Colonel. Laura Anderson, age 21. Number on Pacific Street. All right. Get on it, Sergeant. Yes, sir. She was stabbed in the small of the back, commando fashion. So the man we want is probably a soldier. Yes, sir, I'm afraid so. 21 years old. I'm telling you, I didn't kill her. She was dead when I got there. Look, Colonel, I'm not confessing to something I didn't do. $10,000 worth of Signal Corps supplies are missing from the warehouse. How about confessing to that, at least? What for? Why should I? Look, I don't know anything about it. You were on guard duty there. Yeah, that's right. You were on guard duty and you had a date with this Laura. No, sir, no, I didn't. I heard a noise in the bush and I went to take a look. Expect us to believe that. She was your girlfriend. We know all about it. You were seen with her a dozen times. So, all right, so I knew her. So did half the men on the post. Yes, but half the men on the post weren't there. Now, look, Scully, how about confessing and save your outfit the black eye of a court-martial and maybe lighten your sentence? Oh, I pass. I'll ask you again. Take him back. guys trying to do to me? Railroad me? No. You bought the ticket. We're just punching it. Go on. Don't look now, but your heart's bleeding. Oh, I like sympathetic women, all right. But they're not so hot around the office. I'm typing up the Scully report for the trial judge advocate. There's a name I want to check, Bush. Is that B-U-S-H or B-U-S-C-H? Oh, yeah, I've got it right here. It's B-U-S-H, small-time gambler, served two terms on the mainland for running a floating crap game, completely rehabilitated, now runs only floating poker games. Yeah, and that's just one of the things that makes me wonder. All right, Corporal, supposing we stop beating around the Bush, B-U-S-H? I don't know what you mean. Oh, you don't? Well, it's none of my business, but how can you take the word of a man like that? Who said I did? An oath to that bird is just like any other four-letter word. But everything he said adds up. It's right here in the affidavit. We've got Scully cold. Well, I don't believe he did it. Maybe we ought to put that remark in the file. It's the only thing I've been able to dig up in Scully's favor so far. Look, how do you know Scully didn't win that money you found in his locker? You only have the word of this fellow Bush that he was a loser. Turner... You are the best-looking corporal I've ever seen, but just hold on a minute. I investigated this case for two weeks solid. All right, it's none of my business. Railroad him. Now, wait a minute. He was on duty the night it happened. His fingerprints were on the knife. There was blood on his shirt. He had $500 in his footlocker that he said he won in Bush's game. And besides that, the dead girl's roommate heard her gabbing about how they used to loot the warehouse every night Scully was on duty. Don't go over it. I know all that. And you still think he's Nathan Hale? All I know is this. A girlfriend of mine broke up with him because he was so lucky he thought about nothing but gambling. Sarge, couldn't he have won that money in some other game? Why don't you check around? Forget it. Bet you a dinner at the Royal Hawaiian, Scully's Innocent. No soap. All right. If you're scared, you'll be proved wrong. Oh, uh, wait a minute. About that dinner, uh, drinks and everything to go with it? Everything on the menu. 
You haven't seen Bush around, have you? Bush? Why do you want him, Sarge? Oh, a couple of questions I forgot to ask him, that's all. He's not at the same phone number. Yeah, he moves around a lot. The city cops bother him. Say, who's the mouse? Forget it. She's too busy playing detective. Look, O'Hara, you located Bush for me once before. I figured maybe you could do it again. Well, the truth is that I've been too busy to sit in on any of the games since Cully killed that Lara. This is the fourth inventory they've asked for. Anything else missing? Comes up different every time. Uh, look, O'Hara, you wouldn't know of any other game that Scully played in, would you? No, just Bush's. Why? Well, we want to be sure that Scully didn't win that money someplace else. You don't believe that song and dance, do you, Sarge? Scully's the biggest liar in the outfit. He should be in public relations. Yeah. Well, see if you can locate him for me, will you? I'll do what I can. Now, how about the mouse? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> well, I hope you're satisfied. And I hope you've got the money to pay for that meal. You haven't won yet. You want to raise the stakes? Oh, don't be silly. Who'd hold them? So what are you worried about? Decker sniffs the same tracks, he trees the same pigeon, Scully. Suppose somebody walks in while you're talking to Decker. Somebody that was there the night that Scully cleaned out the game. Ken's got a point. Yeah. When's the court-martial? Next week. We put Decker in the hospital for a while. When he gets out, it'll all be over. Stop thinking with your hands, Ken. If you'd have been smart and given Laura a fair split, we wouldn't be in this jam now. Listen, I did it to protect us both. It was a fair split. She got what I give her. And when she made trouble, she got what I give her. You jump Decker and he'll know something's wrong. What do you take me for? I'll put him away and he won't know from nothing. How? You just go ahead and tell him where the game is tonight. <laughs> Give me a cut. But he just... I said give me a cut. Anybody else? Bush, you know Decker. Yeah. What can I do for the Army? One more question about Scully. Do you know of another game he played in? Ever heard him talk about another game? He lost so much here, he wouldn't have enough for another one. Could you tell how much he lost altogether? Well, I got to be honest with you. It'd just be a guess. Okay. Two, three thousand, like that. Let me see your discard, soldier. Sure. You tossed away three cards, not two. Dealt yourself six. You're crazy. Here, count them. Yeah. You've been cheating, all right. Count them or shut up. Why, you dirty little... <laughs> Break it up. Yeah, beat it. We don't want your kind in here anymore. No worry. Come on, soldiers, outside. You lose. What did you say? You lose. But you haven't finished yet. There was no other game. Scully lost, you lose. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll have lobster on ice. <laughs> Tonight will be all right with me, unless you want to wait until payday. How sure are you there was no other game? <laughs> now comes the weaseling. You trying to back out? No, I'm not trying to back out. Then I'll meet you at the club at 7. I can't believe 
I read Scully's story very carefully. What's the matter? You got a crush on him or something? No. Oh, if that isn't just like a man. Well, being just like a man gets to be a habit with some guys. You're prejudiced against Scully. Send another man to question Bush. What for? It's in the MP handbook. Different investigators should question witnesses because of different I approach. I wrote the handbook. <clears throat> Sergeant Decker. Yeah. Ethel Blake. Oh, yes, Miss Blake. I remember you very well. Yeah. You have? I'll be right over. What's the matter? That was Ethel Blake. Yeah, I know. The dead girl's roommate. I know. I typed your report. <laughs> oh, yeah. About 25, blonde, blue eyes, slender, about 34, 22, 36. I began to think you were more interested in her measurements than in her testimony. <laughs> what does she want? I'll find out when I get over there. Somehow I don't think you'll have your mind on your work. I'll come with you. Oh, now, wait a minute. To protect my bet. I'll keep in the background. I won't open my mouth. Yeah, that'll be the day. All right, get your bonnet. I didn't know you were bringing anyone. I bet you didn't. What? I said I'm Corporal Turner. I work with Sergeant Decker. Yes, with me. And sometimes on me. Oh. Well, won't you come in, please? Nice place you have here, Miss Blake. Thank you very much. Can I fix you a drink? No, not right now. Oh, but I made martinis just like last time. Uh, no, thanks. Well, come in and sit down, then. You must pay a lot of rent. If you don't mind a personal question, just what do you do? Oh, uh, I'm an entertainer. You must be very talented. Miss Blake sings at the Continental Bar. Uh, we're in kind of a hurry, so... Oh, I'm in no rush. If you'd just tell us why you phoned. Oh, sure. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. I was cleaning out Laura's closet the other day, and I found a suitcase. I figured you ought to have it. Well, I mean, Scully ought to have it, since it's his. It's over there by the door. It's locked. Well, we can take it in and open it. Yeah, well, go ahead and do that. Well, what's the hurry? After all, there's no bomb in it. Be a good little soldier. Uh, Miss Blake, when did Laura first tell you what she was doing? You mean about looting the supply depot with Scully? Yes. Well, it was about a week before Scully killed her. I was terribly shocked. I don't have to tell you. You understand. Sure. You see, I got suspicious when she offered to pay half her rent, which I knew was more than she was earning, so it all came out. Go on. Well, we've been through all this before. She had a pass. She used a car to go in and out. That made it easy for her to wait on the base after work and meet Scully. Mm -hmm. Did she ever mention a third party where she got rid of the stuff? No. Why, what's the matter? Won't Scully talk? He claims he wasn't in on it. Oh. Well, I suppose I would, too, if I were in his position. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. That'll be all for now, Miss Blake. Ethel. It's a lousy name, but I come when I'm called. With this high rent, that's the important thing. Okay, Ken, you can come out now. They're gone. They've gone and they're hooked. <laughs> All right, Scully, let's have it. You haven't got a leg to stand on, soldier. Look, the clothes are mine, but I never saw them transistors before. Fifty dollars a piece, and it's your suitcase. It used to be. I gave it to Laura months ago. With this evidence, you'll get the limit. Don't you know when you're beat? Look, it only proves that Laura was a crook, not me. How'd you get the stuff if you didn't help her? You might as well ask me when I'm getting out of here. Scully, there's one thing in your favor. The knife belonged to her. It indicates that the murder was not premeditated. 
But why should I kill her? We got along great. She pulled the knife on you. You fought for it. Involuntary manslaughter is a minor charge compared to murder. No, that's not the way it was. I went out to meet her and she was dead. Meet her? Up till now, you've been telling us you went out to investigate some noise. Okay. I went to meet her in the usual place. Take this down, Corporal. Every once in a while, I met her and we had a smoke and we talked for a while. Is that when you passed her the stuff? No! I would have told you this before, but I knew I was doing wrong. Leaving my guard post, that's against regulations. I knew it. There's an old saying, Scully. One lie always hides another. But everything else I told you was the truth. That'll be all. Come on. He's all yours. What are you doing, Corporal? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, sir. I was just noticing these clothes. They don't seem very wrinkled. Hey, Sarge. They pull you on the carpet, too? No, I'm an MP. Hey, man, you can help me. I'm charged with disturbing the peace. Now, I didn't start the fight. You were there. Uh, the other guy, he started it. I'll see what I can do. Man, when you jumped in, I thought him and O'Hara were gonna clobber you good. O'Hara? Is he the one that was on my back? Oh, I, I guess he couldn't tell you in the dark. I almost popped you myself. The name's Prados, Vic Prados. Thanks for fixing me up. I hope. Okay. Decker? Hmm? Corporal Turner's made a very interesting discovery. His clothes aren't wrinkled enough to have been squashed in here for two weeks. Okay, Sherlock. How long have they been in there? If the dead girl packed them, it has to be two weeks or longer. Maybe it's the material that doesn't wrinkle. It's cotton. I think you ought to have a talk with Miss Blake about this, Decker. Corporal, you go along as a witness. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fifteen minutes, she might come back. I bet she skipped. Oh, stop being like a cop. You're a clerk typist. Be happy. Sarge, could there be any connection between O'Hara and this Blake girl? No, I checked them out. They don't even know each other. Uh, I guess catching Scully in that lie really clinches it for you. No, later. You watch the house. If that car leaves, follow it. But if it stays, you stay. I'll be back. At least tell me where you're going. That guy with him is Bush. Now, you do what I said, and don't leave the car. Hi, Sarge. How are you? You're a stinking liar, O'Hara. What are you talking about? That fight last night was rigged to get me. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. I'm arresting you. You know your rights under Article 31? Yeah, what's the charge? Complicity in murder and theft involving army property. You're all wet, Decker, but uh, I can't afford any trouble, so I'll uh, make your deal. I don't like being had. A uh, thousand now and another grand in three months? Who paid you to lie for Scully? That takes care of the questions, too. No deal.
here to question Miss Blake, Sergeant Decker and me. Quit stalling. You're here on your own. Let's get out of here before Decker gets here. Yeah, but we got to get rid of her first. They know where I am. If anything happens to me... You know, to me... she don't drive so good. Hey, what about the coast road on our way to the boat? One of those sharp curves. You bring her car, we'll take her in mind. Get something to tie her up. Yeah. thing going for a while, transistors, crystals, and miles of that expensive copper wire. While Laura played around with Scully, keeping him off our necks, Bush and me loaded the stuff in the back of her car. You mean Scully wasn't wise? He didn't even know the time of day. He was so flipped over that little skirt, he was even talking about marrying her. And Bush had to go and put her lights out. Right now, I wish I could put out his. Looks like you won't have to, O'Hara. Well, that checks with what Bush told us. Tell the MP we're through with this man, and then you can go to dinner. Yes. Uh, Sergeant Decker. Yeah? You can pick me up at 7. You're taking her out to dinner? Yes, sir. Nice girl. Yes, sir. Smart as a whip. Yes, sir. Leave her alone. Sir? You heard me. Leave her alone. No dinner dates. I don't want any trouble in this office. <laughs> but, Colonel, you don't understand. You see, we made a bet and I lost. That's an order. Well, Colonel, if you don't mind, sir, I... I think I'll put in for transfer, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 